How you doing, everybody? Um, I just want to go with a little bit. Uh, my last video was about um, about how to, like how I like to do my races and stuff like that, and how and give you some suggestions on uh, your races. Um, today, I want to just go a little bit about. I got notes here, so I kind of kind of refer to these a little bit uh, about how you can do your races um, based upon you know you're accommodating your how much you can accommodate in space from where you want to do your races some people do it in their basement some people do it in their bedroom some people have like a rec room which is the ideal location um for me i need a lot of space so i really have to like set up my drag in my living room and i can only do about 30 feet i'm looking to really i could do 40 but i have to like start moving things and i'm not really into doing that um so uh i prefer about 30 feet while it's in the house. Once I get out and find a location, I can get it up in my 40 feet. Um, so you have to make a decision on, uh, do you want a, what kind of track you want to race on? Do you want to do a standard drag? Do you want to do stuff with turns? Uh, do you want to do stuff with loops? So, you know, more trick stuff. Uh, do you want to do it like a fat track? Like they do like 3d bot maker does his uh, races where it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of a combination between a banger race, which is the other one, and kind of like just an open, just open racing, which the cars have no lane restrictions. They can just go and cut you off. And it's pretty, pretty, pretty interesting to watch because cars almost like they have minds of their own and they actually like avoid other cars. It's kind of crazy how it works like that. But um, um, another thing you have to look at is what your length's going to be. Uh, like I said, basically, uh, what can you accommodate? Do you want to do a standard length? It, which it would be um, a 20 foot drag. Why 20 feet? Because basically if you scale out a, a 164th car, 164-ish, because some are not really 164 scale, but they're close. Uh, a quarter mile, which is a standard race length, which is about 20 feet. So that's what it equals. Uh, I'd like 40 feet, which is a half mile, um, which is also great as well if you can get the space. Um, so... What are you going to use to, to race? Do you have a start gate? Do you have a finish gate? And do you have a catch? And a catch would be something you would put past beyond the uh, finish gate so that the cars get caught. And if you're really interested in keeping the cars in really, really good shape, like almost all my cars are, like the car that I have had, which was the my really fastest Red Vet that I ever had, um, I got this out of a pack. It's still in amazing shape, and I got this in the 80s. So you really need to, and this is from, um, I don't know about the year this was, but this is the year I got it. I can't even read it on there, but suffice to say it's 1980. Um, and I keep my cars in pristine condition and that's just from taking care of things. If you want to take good care of it, you'll keep them in either in cases like these or you'll um, just avoid touching the paint. Because every time you pick a car up, you actually, the oils in your skin will start to remove the tampos. Um so overall costs is um, another thing. So there's my tracks there, my boards. There's my start. You can see the hinge I use to make the angle. You can adjust your angles any way you want. Um, remember the steep, like we discussed, if you have a, just a, a really steep angle on a short track, your heavier cars are going to go faster. If you have a longer track, the naturally fast cars are going to go faster. Um, depending on your you know if you have loops and stuff like that you know weight can be also be a factor and and, and um how the cars handle going upside down um which i don't like to do because they some of them don't make it and they crash and you know whatever um so back to a little bit of the races again uh, um so you look at a banger race uh which is cars go they start out and they rush down to filter into a small area where only one car can get through the one car that gets through wins uh, but they smash each other up and when cars crash they tend to can get bent up axles and then you know once in a while freak accidents happen and that's why i like to have a catch at the bottom of these uh at the finish so that they get caught but not enough where it's pressing the car down to you know ruin it and basically you if you it's like a little kid getting a car and what do they do they press down the car and then that bends the axles and it's done it's racing um so you want something that catches it so that the cars don't fly all over the place. And yes, they can leave the track and stuff like that, but that, that's just part of racing sometimes. Um, so <clears throat> I look at also this transference, which I made again from cardboard. I just kept gluing them together until I came up with the proper angle. And that's just to make it easier of a flow so the cars don't have such a drastic um, convergence from the angle to the straightaway. Um, so... 
uh, cost. Here's the biggie. So all my products costed just the technological parts from 3D Bot Maker was about 160 bucks, give or take, plus tax or whatever. It's like 162 uh, dollars for the um, start gate, the finish gate, the uh, connectors which connect all four lanes, and then I'm getting an electronic timer soon. And so that you know, it's a decent, it's well worth the investment if you want to do some raising. Um, <clears throat> plus the boards, which are really cheap at Home Depot, they were about maybe a few dollars per bo six foot board. And I have about you know, like seven or eight of those boards, which enabled me to get up to 40 feet. And then I cut one board just so that it's a little bit shorter for the angle. And then I can adjust it there forth. Um, and how many lanes you want to run? So if you want to run four lanes like I do, it's going to cost you a little bit because each one of these tracks, maybe let's just say it's about a dollar a foot. Um, if you want to run a 40 foot track, it's $160. So think about that. 160 plus another 160 there, that's 320 bucks. Basically, you can put it together. You don't need a timer. So without the timer, you know, tr you can put a good track together for 200 and some dollars. Uh, depending how long you want to do it. If you just want to do a 20-foot track, you could put it together for probably, um, if you put a two-lane 20-foot track, it's not going to cost you much at all. Um, <clears throat> you know, a two-lane two timer, a two-lane gate. You know, I used to use a ruler when I was a kid just to hold the cars and then lift them up. Um, but it's a little, not as fair as uh, the, this is, uh, the automatic start. Um, so that's about it um so if you really want to do that you have to determine all these little factors and um you know angles and length and things like that and then you should have you know fun with your racing and uh, i've been doing it for god over 40 years racing my cars so i've learned through trial and error what works what doesn't work and um you know you should have uh, some if you have any great ideas that maybe you know somebody's missing or whatever or maybe even i'm missing I'm more than open to suggestions and uh, all right. Look forward to hearing from you later.